Hello everyone and welcome to Arpita Sharma classes. Today we are going to talk about environment and ecology. Three important topics in environment and ecology. Urban heat islands, carbon sink and zero budget natural farming. So first let us talk about urban heat islands. Urban heat islands, this can also be asked as a main question. So you have to have a clear cut knowledge about how you have to answer this question you can be divided or you can make a subheads like this and you can answer it introduction causes consequences and impact conclusion or way ahead and questions and these questions you need not include in your answer writing this is these are the questions that i have included for prelims and mains urban heat islands what is an urban heat island what do you mean by urban urban is simple terms you can say it is a city and there is heat in this okay so this is concentrated to one place so you are you are calling it an island that is because this area is heated up and surrounding areas are normal areas that is the suburban urban areas or the rural areas so these areas are not getting heated up only the urban area is getting heated up so this is concentrated to one place so you are calling it a urban island so, urban heat island is a phenomena where the temperature of the urban area is higher when you compare it to the surrounding areas that is either to the rural area or the suburban area that is surrounding the cities. Recent study that was conducted by IIT Karakpur has said that anthropogenic activities are causing more and more heat urban heat islands. What are anthropogenic activities? Anthropogenic activities are man-made activities either like f burning of fossil fuels or you can say uh, because of the construction of buildings there is more heat that is getting trapped in the cities so because of this there is increase in the heat that is there in the urban urban lands this is a pictorial representation of a urban heat island so you see here you can jot down the causes of this and then we'll come back to the diagram what are the causes there is more urbanization rapid unplanned material such as asphalt concrete where do you use, use asphalt this is for the construction of roads concrete is for the construction of buildings they will absorb more heat because of these materials heat from the automobiles air conditioning industries and other sources presence of atmospheric aerosols urban architecture tall buildings with narrow streets you are having more buildings in the urban area and because of that the buildings are next to each other like this and there is a narrow path here because of that there is lesser movement of hair that will reduce the wind speed therefore it will reduce the natural cooling effect that has to be present because if the air is naturally cir circulating in the urban area there will be cooling effect so because of these buildings there will be the, this air cannot move with so much freedom so that this is create there will be no cooling effect so this is this effect is known as the urban canyon effect having dark surfaces okay you are painting the surfaces as dark and also usually these buildings in the urban areas are made up of glass okay so these will have decreased albedo and they will increase the absorption of heat and mass transportation system leading to more burning of fossil fuels and there is lack of evapotranspiration this is seen in the plants okay what is evapotranspiration it is transpiration plus evaporation evaporation means the transfer of moisture from the earth into the atmosphere so this is a plant you consider this is a tree and there is surface over here because there is a surface over here it is there is soil and from here the moisture will be lost from the soil into the atmosphere this is known as evaporation what is transpiration this plant has roots and these roots will take in water from the soil it is circulated all over the plant or the tree okay when it reaches the leaves it will be lost into the atmosphere in the form of uh, vapor water or evaporated it it will get evaporated from the stomata that is present in the leaves this stomata are the small very minute pores that are present in the leaves so 
because of these two there there will uh, because of these two there will be lesser warming of the atmosphere and now because you are destroying more and more plants and more and more trees this evapotranspiration will not take place so it will lead to heating up of the urban lands now let us go back to the picture and see what it tells us because of the trees here there will be evapotranspiration when you destroy this there is no evapotranspiration see temperature will go down there will be vaporization or evapotranspiration and because of this heat will come down now heat is not going down because you have already cut down this tree and there is a road made here because it is made of asphalt and then it will absorb more heat and it will release that heat as well it will not keep it with itself so again it is heating up and then there is car this car or this way in general you can consider it a vehicle it is running on a fossil fuel again again this burning of fossil fuel will reduce will will uh, release heat into the atmosphere and then there is sun over here okay the sun rays is falling on the surfaces it is falling on this building as well and on this road as well so it is also increasing the heat B this is the source for everything and then there is a building this building see it is increasing the area that you are it is increasing the area of heat absorption before when this building was not there this was the only this is the only see this is the only place where the where there was land and sunlight will fall only on this area and evaporation will take place only from this area now you have increased the surface area see one i'll show it to you see surface area is increased one Two and three. This much surface area is absorbing heat, and that is also giving out heat because the surface area is increased. More and more heat is increasing, and then this building also has air conditioners, and that will also release some heat. And then anthropogenic heat, burning of fossil fuels, we have seen, and temperature will increase. All this will lead to, and you are also destroying these lakes or ponds that are present because you are expanding this urban land and. because of the destruction of this there is lesser evaporation also if there is vaporization or evaporation from these uh, lakes or ponds that are present then temperature will come down these are also being destroyed now what are the impacts or what are the consequences because of this now let us classify them what how it will impact the humans how it will impact the climate and how it will impact the nature humans it will cause heat strokes headache tiredness when you usually go out in the sun and come back home usually you get headache because of pollution that is present outside or because of the sun's rays that falls on your head now imagine there is more and more heat and you go out and come you definitely are tired very tired and there are people who are working in the hot sun outside who like uh, people who are working in the construction areas who are working in the construction of roads etc and this will reduce this uh, urban heat island will reduce their efficiency and these people are known as the sweltering workers climate and what affects this urban heat island or has on the climate it will cause global warming it is seen that the facts say that 30% there is increase in the global warming because of urban heat islands and there is change in the rainfall patterns you know when there is a climate change there is there will be change in the rainfall patterns increased use of air conditioners you are using air conditioners and you know air conditioners will add to air pollution because they release the Uh, cfcs hcfcs they they will release these air pollutants so there will be increase in air pollution and because of the use of air conditioners because it is always very hot you always need a fan or you always need a ac because of this power consumption is also increasing because power consumption is also increasing indirectly your cost or your spending on the power consumption is also increasing now what effect does it have on nature on nature plants growth is also affected plants need like humans plants also need some suitable environment to grow you when you cannot tolerate heat how can plants tolerate heat even they cannot tolerate heat so plants growth will be affected and heating up of the lakes and the ponds will take place now there is a building and this roof is heated up Th suppose there is rainfall this water will flow it will go into the lakes this water is already heated up it will go into the lake and it will heat up this water as well so the fishes that 
aquatic life that is present here will be affected the metabolism the reproductivity of these aquatic life fishes etc will be affected because of this even when there is no rainfall natural sunlight that will fall on this and uh, natural uh, sunlight that will fall on this th this lakes would have become smaller and smaller because of urbanization more and more heat lesser surface to give out heat so this will get heated up again then what can you do to mitigate this or what is the way forward you can paint the rooftop with light colors that is if the uh, if your building is painted with white color or light color the absorption capacity will reduce that will, it will not absorb more heat increase the ventilation of the building so that your need for the fan and ac will be reduced it will also reduce your electricity bill more and more plants have to be more and more trees and plants have to be planted if there is a place constraint that you say there are there is no place in the urban areas please do vertical farming or you can do rooftop farming in the apartments that you there that are present in the urban areas please do kitchen gardening and rooftop gardens and use sustainable building materials that will absorb lesser heat instead of concrete if there is some other alternative to the concrete that can be used for the building construction now what is the government role or what are the government uh, steps that can be taken by the government to mitigate this urban heat island effect usually if there is some big change that has to happen it is the government that has to come forward and take steps to mitigate any climate change or any disaster or anything from happening so government has a bigger role to play in mitigating the urban heat island effect it can discount the property tax okay it can provide discounts in the property tax if there is some building that has vertical uh, gardens and they can give uh, discount on the property tax for this building so that this person this building also would adopt this strategy so that he will also pay lesser property tax so this property tax discount has to be given to people who are adopting environmentally friendly measures create awareness about renewable alternatives tell them to use some other alternatives renewable energy like wind solar energy so that this will also reduce the urban heat island effect migration and population and concentration in the urban areas has to be reduced migration why, why people migrate to the urban areas in search of jobs so policy makers who are there they have to provide ample amount of job opportunities to this person so that this person does not come into the urban area increasing the population there so he will uh, he, when people when there is more and more migration people have to come and stay reside so there will be more and more buildings that will be created so you can reduce the, the migration or you can avoid this person from coming to the urban land by giving him job in his own village itself in his own place where he is staying so population concentration in urban areas also will be reduced if people are given equal opportunities even in the uh, rural areas this is all about uh, the, um, urban heat islands so let us see quick questions that might be asked or some kind of questions that might come on the urban heat islands what is consider the following statements about urban heat islands and which of them are correct you have to see you know it is the area that is warmer when compared to the surrounding areas as yes, it is correct the temperature difference is larger during the night than during the day this is correct because during the day the building would have absorbed more and more heat and at night when there is no sun this building will start giving out the heat that it has absorbed during the sun during the daytime so the temperature difference is larger during the night only than the day so this statement is also correct uhi is most noticeable during summer only it is most not only in summer it is also in winter so this statement is false please correct this only one and two are correct for mains you can be asked a question urban heat island what is an urban heat island what are the factors responsible for urban heat island so you can discuss the way i have given it in the slides as well let's go on to the next topic carbon sink what is a carbon sink when you know it is a sink what is a sink that is in your house usually a sink is having some vessels it is a reservoir 
what is your kitchen sink it is a reservoir of vessels what is a carbon sink it is a reservoir of carbon it is it is either natural or it is otherwise that is a man can also make a carbon sink it can also be man made that absorbs this uh, carbon sink is some place it can be this place that will absorb more carbon than it releases if something is releasing lesser carbon it means that is a lesser polluting substance so if this sink or this reservoir is absorbing more carbon but giving out less carbon that is it is absorbing more carbon but giving out less carbon then it is known as a carbon sink thereby it is lowering the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere globally two most important carbon sinks are uh, vegetation and for ocean vegetation is nothing but the forest and ocean is the seas and the oceans these are the two important carbon sinks Ca the carbon dioxide sink is a carbon reservoir the sinks include forest ocean soil and plants and other organisms that use photosynthesis to remove carbon from the atmosphere by incorporating it into the biomass carbon sequestration is a topic that is related to carbon sink carbon sequestration is the term that describes the process that will remove the carbon from the atmosphere what is carbon sink carbon sink is a reservoir that will uh, absorb more carbon than what it releases what is carbon sequestration it is that term that is uh, telling you that something is removing carbon from the atmosphere how is it achieved plant will plants will take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere yes because of photosynthesis because of that greenhouse gas carb atmo in the atmosphere that is carbon dioxide will be reduced some of the carbon is transferred to the soil as plants will die and they will decompose in the form of organic matter straightforward marine animals will also take up gas for photosynthesis while some carbon dioxide simply will dissolve into the sea water itself so oceans are here acting as a carbon sink what is the risk but due to human activities such as deforestation because we are cutting off the plants and the weather changes the sinks are dying we are polluting the waters and uh, the deforestation that people are doing because of this the sinks that is the forest the vegetation and the oceans and the seas are dying eventually the sponges are becoming weak it becomes imperative to reduce our carbon footprint and simultaneously improve conditions of carbon sinks so we have to reduce the carbon emission that we are doing and we have to ensure that these vegetation and oceans are not lost because uh, without any expense with you are not spending anything on maintaining these forest and oceans they are giving you free services of capturing carbon so people should not be destroying them next topic is zero budget natural farming so what is zero budget natural farming it is a method where farming uh, where the cost of growing and harvesting the plants is completely zero here we are talking only about the farm farming cost okay we are not talking about very specific thing um, that don't tell me that people are working there and you are going to pay for them why why are you saying zero budget it's not uh, based like that it is based on for farming you are not using any inputs that is you are not um, using any costly things that to grow on the land this means that farmers need not purchase the fertilizers and pesticides in order to ensure the healthy growth of the plants because you have to apply the fertilizers and the pesticides for the plants to grow here especially in zero budget natural farming you are not using them you are instead instead of these so if you are not using fertilizers if you are not using pesticides how will the plants grow you have to use some alternatives to these so the plants will grow the alternatives are the natural farming techniques because you are using biological pesticides and biological fertilizers instead of chemical based fertilizers you are using earthworms cow dung urine plants human excreta and such other biological fertilizers here you can ask me how will you use the plants plants will uh, die or it will dry up uh, usually uh, if you have seen if there is a plant uh, if there is a tree say guava tree and it is shedding leaves usually you pick up those those leaves and uh, put them near the root root of the plant itself so that that leaf will turn again into manure to that 
to its to its own self that is guava tree is providing manure to itself its dried leaves are becoming manure to itself and reduces the and this all these uh, things that you are using the earthworms the cow dung usually a farmer will have a cow with him so you you need not invest on that as well because a cow is also going to give you uh, income a farmer usually has a cow and that dung that cow, cow's dung and the urine of the cow is also used as a um, fertilizer and as a pesticide it will also protect the soil from degradation and uh, you can you, you can say that overuse of anything anything too much is too bad even if you are using more and more chemical fertilizer some day that soil will become unfit for cultivation so here you are using biological fertilizers because of that the soil fertility will not be lost and the farmer who is entirely dependent on this land for his life and this person will not be in a position uh, later on he will not be in a position that he has lost his land he has become zero there will be nothing like that his land will be there with him what is the background of the zero budget natural farming this uh, became widely known to everybody by Subhash Palekar from Maharashtra in the mid of 1990s which is an alternative to the green revolutions method which led to the indebtedness and suicide among the farmers due to the rising costs on the external inputs in agriculture. Subhash Palekar has seen in Maharashtra where he was living that people, the farmers who were there, they were not able to grow their crops um, grow, grow, they were able to grow their crops but they used to get into this cycle of debt that is in the cycle of loans they will take a loan and this loan they will put it on the farm and they will grow these plants and when they get a harvest they will pay a part of it back into the loan that is they cannot clear the total loan they will pay back a little and they will use a little for their expenses and again when they have to sow they will again go take a loan so they are trapped in the cycle of debt because of this he saw them he they, they had to spend they will take this expense no they have to spend that money on fertilizers also so th he saw that thing happening for a long term and he he saw people come he saw people committing suicide because of their indebtedness so, so he invented this method of zero budget natural farming and people without any external inputs that is you are giving external inputs but it is not costly but it is not uh, non-viable type of inputs it is all in its pocket expenditure only not out of pocket expenditure and this revolution during this green revolution impact of chemicals on the environment and on a long fertility and on the long term fertility were also very devastating you know that anything too much is too bad so it was it was the land was also losing fertility and when you have when you have used these uh, chemicals you it will definitely enter into the um, so food chain of the people also if people are consuming this uh, plants that is grown and this chemical that you have used on the plant will get into the food chain of the human also so this uh, problem will also not be there if you are using biological fertilizers zbnf would be break the cycle of debt for small farmers as i told what are the components of this uh, z uh, z zero budget natural farming is there is jivamrita bijamrita achadana vapasa jivamrita is you are using microbial culture fermented microbial culture you are using urine and dung of the indigenous cows what are indi what is the meaning of indigenous indigenous means the our, our own cows the indian breeds uh, and paste of green gram to regenerate the soil so you are preparing the soil using these and you will provide micronutrients to the crops Th these are first before uh, this you you used to provide the artificial fertilizers for these micronutrients now we are providing natural ones and this process is known as jivamrita bijamrita bija means seed bijamrita means you are treating the seed or any seedlings or any planting material that you are using treating that is known as bijamrita achadana it will promote the mulching and soil aeration and favorable soil conditions okay and vapasa vapasa is you are uh, going to provide moisture to the soil because moisture is very important for a soil to grow what are the benefits of zbnf generally if you see what are the benefits of zbnf because there is no input 
or there is zero input people need not spend okay so there it is economically viable and uh, it provides farmers uh, it will reduce the farmers cost through eliminating external inputs and uh, using in situ resources to rejuvenate the soils cow dung from local cows has been proven to be a miraculous cure as i told you if you are using chemical fertilizers that soil fertility will be lost because you are using cow dung there is miraculous they have told it is having a miraculous cure that means it is it is going to retain that fertility and nutrient value of the soil not only retain it it is also going to increase it and uh, uh, is it uh, the dung is believed to have increased 30 to 300 to 500 crore beneficial microorganisms that will uh, convert this dried biomass on the soil and convert it and ready to use nutrients for the plants uh, zero budget natural farming they, they are saying that it will require only 10 percent of water only 10 percent of water and only 10 percent of electricity so because of this it can also be grown in the areas where there is water scarcity what are the government initiatives for the zero budget natural farming there are two uh, schemes that are adopted uh, in param paragat krishi vikas yojana these are not comprehensively for zero budget natural farming but these two programs have components of zero budget natural farming param paragat krishi vikas yojana and rashtriya krishi vikas yojana in param paragat krishi vikas yojana there are different types of farming that has been mentioned like natural farming vedic farming zero budget natural farming they are included in this param paragat krishi vikas yojana and this vikas yojana has also given the states to adopt their own model for organic farming okay they need not follow any other if uh, any other model that is given by central government states have their own independence they can choose any other uh, alternative if they want through rashtriya krishi vikas yojana what is happening is organic farming or natural farming is considered by the state level sanctioning committee according to their priority or choice they can choose this okay according to uh, rashtriya krishi vikas yojana and uh, as we have done this uh, comment in the comment box and tell me which state is declared as a fully organic state and when was it declared so that is all for today thank you